Test control, you are go for Excel to Mach 1.1. Go for Excel, Castro Gate. Castro Gate, go for Excel. So this is the really exciting part. Watch the Mach number in the middle of the screen. Space one, full gate. Three engines and afterburner. Mach number's ticking up. There so we are. Yeah. XB1 yeah. is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Control We've got confirmation from the control room that it, she is supersonic. What a wonderful achievement. Geppetto and the whole team know what a really historic moment this is. The first civil aircraft control. independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. And Geppetto is the first pilot ever to do it. It is really thrilling moment. Control, and we can see her right now watching it. Nick, how do you feel? It's, uh, fantastic. M Mike, I've been working on this program for years. Not just me. So many people have poured years of effort into this moment and to just think that this is the first civil supersonic aircraft in American history. I'm just, I'm to the moon uh, excited about how well that went. We saw the Mach number lingering there a little bit. It kind of paused at 0.97. We actually expected that. We talked about that in this morning's brief, uh, how sometimes the air data doesn't really know what to do with that onset of the shock wave when it actually hits Mach 1. But then it, it came back. It, uh, we saw 0.04, I think, was the first indication. But here we are at Mach 1, 1.1. Uh, 1. Airplane looks great, and they're into testing. Flying supersonically, what the, what's the experience like? Well, from my experience on Concorde, there's absolutely no physical sensation once you're supersonic. There's also no physical sensation of going through the sound barrier. When a plane's traveling at faster than the speed of sound, and today it's up around about 770 miles per hour, you really don't realize it. And yet, today, for instance, uh, XB1 is traveling so quickly that a distance like that between, say, San Diego, and San Diego and Los Angeles could be covered in just a mere 10 minutes. She's actually far, flying faster than the Earth rotates. She's going so quickly that, that the sun is going literally backwards in the sky. It's quite an amazing experience. And yet that's the really clever thing that the aviation engineers succeed in doing, to make the experience so that... Uh, an aircraft can do all of this while the passengers are just sitting in comfort and even sometimes they have to put indicators in the cabin to make sure that the customers do know that the aircraft is flying supersonically. So Nick, I mean, tell us a little bit more about what's going on for this stage of the testing. Yeah, it looks like we, we're just kind of flying straight and level, but I can tell you there's a flurry of activity happening in the control room right now. Uh, the flutter engineers, we just activated what we call the flutter excitation system, and the loads and dynamics team within the control room are looking at the data about how air, the aircraft structure, uh, when it's vibrated, how it interacts with the airflow on condition supersonic Mach 1.1. So they're, they're actively monitoring that uh, aero, we call aero servo elasticity is the dynamic of the aircraft structure. Uh, that's what they're focused on. As soon as that flutter test is complete, we're going to enter uh, a, a phase that we call a flying qualities, handling qualities block. And that's evaluating how XB1 is to fly. You know, I can see now that we're still at 34,000 feet. We're in the turn. We're heading back to the east. So I anticipate we're going to accelerate again. Um, to get some more data here would be my anticipation, uh, as we discussed in the brief this yeah, morning. So, so watch that the control room there. Yep. yep. So kind of two for the price of one, really. Two supersonic flights for the price of one. And just yep. to see the team, they're absolutely thrilled we can see here. And there we are, supersonic again. Knock it off, knock it off, knock it off. Just going through the sound barrier, pop up to Mount 1.1, and then she'll probably come back down to route back towards the west and, and back towards home by routing over Edwards Air Force Base and then back to the Mojave Sea Air and Spaceport. So... Uh, I, I actually say it looks like we're in AB at Mach 0.96 uh, and 34,000 feet. This is, is an indication to me that we are going supersonic again once more oh. uh, on the uh, heading to the southwest, uh, back into that corridor. So very much along the same line of, as our uh, first supersonic run. The, an indication to supersonic. <laughs> we are now <laughs> supersonic three times on this flight, um, which is quite uh, unbelievable. Um, and, and it's great. We have the fuel for it. Um, so we're out there, and again, the, the, the objective here is to get the data, and that's what, uh, and that's what the team's doing. 
You sure it's not just Geppetto having a great day out I, there? I mean, I'm sure Geppetto's having a great day out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 it's interesting because I know that um, you know Geppetto's been supersonic a lot of times in his life and in, uh, in his in experience with the F-18s, um, F-5s that he he flies for Navy aggressor squadrons, etc. Um, but I I can promise you no no time has it been more special uh, than today. And I'm pretty sure he didn't expect to get three three cracks at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, Mike, when I was out there at the fence line, I I, I just took a moment just for me. I, I just watched it take off because every time that uh, we've flown uh, to date, I've been in the control room looking at data. So I had like myself a little Anakin Skywalker moment there. <laughs> Let me look upon you with my own eyes, and it was it was truly emotional just to see. Uh, the airplane fly for the first time. Um, I, I'm just I'm to the moon that is going s well enough that they've elected to do a third run yeah. uh, and clean up all the data points. And it looks like they're in the handling qualities evaluations now. There's a little bit of maneuvering going on. Um, you can see this would be indicative sort of of a roll step. Um, you want to evaluate in the handling qualities evaluations all three axes. So uh, there'll be a pitch input, and you and really what this is is to see how the aircraft. You know, you, you put a disturbance in, and then how does it settle out? And in a lot of the predictions that go into this. Um, and the tools that we have, uh, you know, that's it's a lot about the, the flying dynamics of the aircraft. Um, if, if some of you are wondering, like, we're in afterburner, it's like, why is the aircraft, and now you can see we're out of afterburner and start to descell here a little bit. Did you want the uh, um, Sorry, I'm off condition already. And so, uh, it, it may be a question. Uh, let's wrap it up and head on home. If